Hey guys, Lily, welcome back to my really, really messy channel today. I'm not sure how I'm wearing this bucket hat. I don't know. We're just going to ignore it, okay? So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made $500 in my first few weeks as a first-time Depop seller. That is not clickbait. I'm just, I'm just good. So how I, I got my first stock is that I went to Goodwill. Obviously, this is kind of still what I do. And I went thrifting. I didn't spend over $50, I don't think. But I bought things I had seen on like Pinterest and like YouTubers, like just trendy things I saw people wear. And a big like indicator if someone's going to buy it and like it on Depop a lot of times is if Emma Chamberlain would wear it. If Emma Chamberlain would wear it, it's going to sell on Depop. I don't know how <laughs> that correlates, but it does. So once you have your items, I'll put like my thrift of me's in the little eye and you can kind of see what I pick up and like get some inspiration. It's really important to get inspiration from other Depoppers. Good photos are key. If you can, I used to hate when people would say this because I really do not believe in it. If you can, definitely try the items on in a picture. People are going to ask for it. And when I tell people I can't wear it, they're like, oh, never mind. It's really important that if you can wear the item, try it on for a picture. If you can't, just tell them you can't and offer the measurements is usually what I do. But if I can't wear in a picture, a lot of times I'll just do like a flat lay. And it's really important that your flat lay looks good. I've had some flat lays that are like... Whenever I take my flat lay pictures, I go out in my backyard as of right now while I'm not in my apartment. And I just lay it out how it's nice. Make sure the ground is not wet. Have also learned that one the hard way. Just lay out my clothes. I usually like if it was a long sleeve, I fold one sleeve in and just make sure it looks really nice and laid out flat. And I'll snap some pictures. Usually take a picture of the tag. I usually take pictures of any kind of flaws. And then if it's a try on picture, I'll use my ring light and I'll just set it up in my room and set up my phone and take some pictures with that. I do pictures pretty quickly. I know a lot of people take hours and hours, but I can do probably about 20 items within like 20 minutes, like an item a minute. And that's a brag. <laughs> When you list your items, I'm really a big advocate for making them cheaper than more expensive. If they're cheaper, you're going to sell more and you're going to make more money in the long run. But I would not list something over $25 unless it's like a pair of Levi's or something. Unless it's just like a really, really desirable item, don't go above $25. You bought it at a thrift store, it doesn't need to be over $25. Whenever you are going to list the item, you want it to be searchable. This is kind of like an SEO type thing. If you do YouTube, you know about SEO. If Depop works almost the same way except it's not as optimizable so you're gonna get your sales from search on the app you're not really gonna get that many from followers at least at first it doesn't matter how many followers you have most of your items sell through search you want them to be searchable and then you want to include those keywords within your description so I'm gonna show you like an example so we're gonna go to one of my examples that just sold it sold within a day this is a Ralph Lauren sweater vest sorry it's so little it's because it's on my iPad I sold this for $22 they did not even try to bring it down they do not lowball or anything. My first line is pull a Ralph Lauren sweater vest. And then I said, this sweater vest is so cute and this color stunning. It's such a gorgeous blue periwinkle color. I love the pink accent and the logo too. I love this sweater vest trend for the fall and late summer. It's so cute. Size large. And then I put what I wear. And then I use my hashtags. You want to make sure to use your hashtags. Hashtag sweater vest. Hashtag pull a Ralph Lauren. Hashtag vintage. Hashtag sweater. Hashtag periwinkle. And then I put more tags. So I can just get all those keywords in there. Tags, periwinkle, blue, blue sweater vest, sweater vest, periwinkle sweater, polo sweater vest, Ralph Lauren, polo Ralph Lauren, polo Ralph Lauren sweater vest, Ralph Lauren sweater vest. And that's my listing. Lots of keywords in there, as you can tell. And it sold within like a day, less than a day, I think. And then I've seen a lot of people on Depop try to use not relevant tags, and that's a big no no, okay? Don't hashtag it Brandy Melville when it's from American Eagle. Don't, don't do that. It's really annoying for the buyer. It's really annoying for sellers who actually have these items and then once you have your posts listed and have all those keywords in there and everything everything going good you want to make sure to edit your post multiple times a day i do this about three times a day especially when you're a smaller shop it's more important to keep editing them just so they keep being pushed to the top of those keywords and people see them um you want people to see your thing before they see something else this is a good way to sell yourself and also maybe gain some followers if you want followers and you want likes find similar listings to what you have and follow Follow people who have liked that listing. I've gotten quite a few sales this way and this is the only way I really get my followers to buy stuff. You don't want to message and be like, I saw you like this. 
I have that. You just want to like nonchalantly follow them. They won't even know that that's why you follow them is because you saw their likes. And then following up with that, do not message people who have just followed you or have liked your item. I did this in the beginning and I honestly think I lost some sales this way just because it comes off very salesperson-y and like buy this please. Like I get some messages that are like, please buy this. And I'm like, oh ma'am so also whenever you sell something you want to remember that if it's sold quickly remember that and go buy more you want to make sure you're supplying people with things that they want if they don't want it they're not gonna buy it a lot of times at thrift stores you'll see something like, like oh this is vintage i'm gonna buy it and sell it if it's really ugly don't buy it even if it's vintage a lot of vintage clothing's ugly let's be honest here let a grandma have it we don't need that on depop okay you don't need to be wasting your money on that let granny buy it okay a lot of people in these videos are like you should definitely niche down on what you sell i don't really agree with that i kind of have a variety i keep it like just like normal vintage things you would find i usually just think in my head would i like this and if i do i buy it and a lot of people who thrift items and stuff tend to have a lot of different styles and that's why they thrift items in the first place is because it's so much cheaper to supply those styles people exist like that okay um i am people so I said earlier to make sure that you don't overprice, but you want to make sure your markup is good. Don't pay like $4 for a top and then sell it for $8 shipped. You're going to be making nothing. You kind of want to make your margin around $6 an item after Depop's fees, after PayPal's fees, because there's a lot of fees that go into selling on Depop. Literally after everything is done, shipping, fees, everything, you want to make sure you're making at least $6 an item. My margins tend to be $11 an item-ish. And you want to be consistent with posting um, and have a good amount of items. The more items you have, the more you're going to sell. The more people are looking at your items and searching the right terms and all of that. Right now, I think I have 60 items for sale and I've sold around 40. So I have like 100 items on my entire thing. Keep things being posted, like constantly be posting things, constantly be thrifting, constantly be getting new stuff. And then at first, I took literally every penny I was making and invested it back in. And that's how I build up my stock was just keep investing it. I'm still investing some of it. I'm not taking literally every penny like I was because then I'd be spending like way too much at a thrift store. I will see. But lastly, if you are serious about this, you need to keep track of your stuff, okay? Keep your receipts. Literally from the moment you start, keep your receipts. Anything that's a business expense, I use my gas when I'm going thrifting. I use like all my receipts from Goodwill. If I get like a little snack, I'll put it in there. <laughs> just literally anything that you do while you're on the clock while you're thrifting i'll put it into my business expense folder make an excel sheet if you want me to do a video on this i definitely can but i have one for all the stuff i have listed and then all the stuff i've sold then i have another little tab for all my expenses just so i can keep track of them again and then lastly one of the most important things is to use other social media to promote you um and that's literally so important i recently have started doing this obviously this channel with my instagram i'm still looking into making a tiktok for it but tiktok can be a little scary because there's a lot of anti-depop people on there that's the video hope you enjoyed make sure you give the big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below for new videos hit that bell so you get notified and yeah i hope you got something out of this video and if you did let me know down below bye i'm the dumb team boy.